Now, before we get started, I need to mention that my old PC died, so I'm using my backup for the next few days until I get the situation sorted out. Unfortunately, what that means is I won't be able to thank any contributors for the time being, though I intend to rectify that in due time. I apologize in advance, and I appreciate everyone's understanding. Now, that said, Joe Biden's going out of his way to show that Democrats want a new voter base. Bad. And the Democrats bootlick operatives like the Simone Sanders, the Congressional Black Talkers, and other white media bootlicks are going out of their way to pretend that they didn't get the memo. Pun intended. Yeah, those Biden bots are looking real stupid about now. Again. DHS says that they're sending out a notice that there's terrorism threats against the LGBT community, against migrants, and against the Jewish community. They sent out that notice and they mentioned everyone except for us. That lets you know this isn't a public safety notice that was being sent out. It was a political campaign advertisement. The Democrats are dog whistling loud and clear that they're looking out for everybody except us. To not include black people in this notice was a glaring and unmistakable omission, as it was supposed to be. Democrats want to get increased support from migrants, from the LGBT community, from the Jewish community, people of every stripe, pattern, and spot except for black people, because apparently we've broken bad on them. We're making demands. Demands that are putting real pressure on white supremacy, and they need an out. This is an all-hands-on-deck clarion call to the public, please get involved, black folks have gone the wrong way on us. And that's because when it comes to the very groups that they had mentioned in this notice, white supremacy isn't threatened by them. The LGBT community is not a threat to white supremacy. Migrants are not a threat to white supremacy. Religion is not a threat to white supremacy. But black empowerment is. And for the Biden administration to deliberately leave black people out of this notice becomes particularly galling when you consider this. In the state of California, black residents are only 6.5% of the population, but are the number one demographic to be targeted for hate crimes. This in what is allegedly the most liberal and progressive state in the U.S. In Chicago, the same thing. Black Chicagoans are the most likely to be the targets of a hate crime more than anyone else. So, between California, which encompasses both Los Angeles and San Francisco, and also in Chicago, which is supposed to be the third largest city in America, you have a clear and inarguable proof that black people are the main ones being targeted. This across America. But that apparently fell out of Biden's DHS's assessment. And none of this is new, by the way. Even the white media has been forced to admit for years that black people are and continue to be the number one targets of hate crime in America. The largest fatality hate crime of this year wasn't that Colorado LGBT bar. It was the Buffalo mass shooting. Ten murder victims, all black. I and just about everybody else in the new black media have been pointing out how Biden was sending a message by leaving us out of that notice. And before any of the trolls and fools try to attempt to say, oh, you're reaching, you're reaching, consider this. White supremacists read between the lines. Remember when Donald Trump made his remarks calling the Charlottesville Nazis very fine people? You had white supremacist websites like The Daily Stormer, who pointed out to their psychotic following that Trump didn't mention any of them and hadn't condemned them. Because at that point, you had a number of those little white supremacists online going, oh my god, Donald Trump, he's caved in to the woke crowd, he's caved in. But it was The Daily Stormer and others who said, no, he didn't. Notice he didn't mention our names and he didn't condemn any of us. The white supremacists correctly discerned that Trump's refusal to condemn them was in fact support. And the opposite is also true. When someone like Biden spells out who it is that they're looking to protect, who they're giving warnings on the behalf of, oh, we just want to let you have a heads up about what's coming. When they decide to leave black people out of that, that's meant for everyone to read between the lines that Biden and the Democrats are wanting to separate themselves from us and that it's okay to go in on black people because this White House, this administration isn't going to do anything about it. Nuri Martinez and her racist pals in the L.A. city government would be proud. The message is clear. Black people should expect no protection from this government. And as far as Biden and the Democrats are concerned, when black people are attacked, it's a victimless crime. Black people will have to ensure their own safety. We'll continue with this Sunday evening address in just a moment. But first, a word from the official sponsor of Black Empowerment. Power Tools. There's no telling when something's going to come up, so make sure you carry your power tools at all times. You never know when you're going to need to bring the hammer down, 
or when you'll have some trash that needs to be blown away, or some obstacle that requires cutting down. Don't get caught empty-handed. Keep your hammer close by. Keep that leaf blower at the ready. And always carry your steel. Power tools. Because no matter what your day job or side hustle may be, there's no excuse for not being ready to put in some work. Family, we cannot be allowing these insults to just go unanswered and uncalled out. The Orlando nightclub shooting happened in 2016 in the waning days of Obama's administration. Democrats responded to that by immediately holding a sit-in on the floor of the House of Representatives. After the Mother Emanuel massacre, where nine black citizens were gunned down in a church, the Democrats responded by having Obama drop by and hum a couple of bars of Al Green. That's how they respond to black people being slaughtered in a church. This is worth noting because Biden said he had black people's backs. Yeah, the number one demo who are the targets of hate crimes in the United States, and Biden deliberately leaves them out of his DHS notice because he's got black people's backs. Actually, what he's done is he's turned his back on us for the last two years, just like he had for the previous 50. Starting next year, primary season begins when the Republicans will be trying to decide which Klan leader they want to put on the ballot for president. And when this really kicks into high gear, Democrats will be the first ones to tell you that we have to vote for Biden because the Republicans, they're not going to do anything for black people. Oh, the Republicans, they're going to neglect the black community. Biden's going to protect black people. Meanwhile, Biden's DHS is telling everyone they're not even thinking about us. A government that deliberately ignores the number one victims of hate crimes in a country, that's a government that wants to perpetuate hate crimes against that particular group. We have to call it out. Part of the new normal for us is to make sure that when people cross us, when they wrong us, we remind them. Make sure that they know we remember. Everyone else loves to remind us of any misstep that a black public figure has ever made, even though those people's faux pas have never harmed anyone. No matter if you call out a messy Jesse or a Jussie Smollett, doesn't matter. They haven't harmed anyone, but they make sure that they mention that to black people, as if every black person is responsible for them. But oh, if black people point out, okay, in that case, there was good for the goose is good for the gander, all of a sudden, oh, you, you can't be sitting here throwing this in our faces. Yes, we can, because that's what's always done to us. And if it's wrong when it happens to other people, then it's also wrong when it happens to us. Except the difference is nobody ever says that except for us. The white media and other interested parties, they make sure to throw it in our faces whenever a black person has a misstep, doesn't matter how long ago it was or how minor it was. Well, we actually have legitimate grievances, not over people's words, but over what people have done, over promises that were made and have never been kept. People need to understand we're not forgetting anything. Because a people who are worthy of respect remember when they've been wronged. A people who look at themselves as having value understand that it's wrong for them to be mistreated or misused by anyone. As for Biden's DHS warning, don't get shook up, family. This tells us absolutely nothing that we didn't already know, including that Biden's not going to apply the law on black people's behalf. This isn't news at all. It's confirmation of what we already knew, disgusting as it is. So we can be disgusted, but don't be surprised. We're going to see to our own safety and to that of the people around us. And guess what? We can. A lot of us already are. You probably remember that white supremacist Gregory Bush in Jeffersontown, Kentucky? He went to a black church planning to carry out a Dylan Roof-style attack on the black worshipers there, but that church had locked their doors and refused to let that white supremacist in. So that animal went up the road to the local Kroger's because he knew that that was a grocery store frequented by black shoppers, and he murdered the first two black people he came across. Now, the white media talks about that, but the part that they don't talk so much about, in fact, the part I can't think any of them mention at all, is that it was a black citizen who opened fire on him when this guy was attempting to leave the scene. That man was protecting his wife from this murder, just like Kenneth Walker was protecting Breonna Taylor. By the way, that also happened in the state of Kentucky. And it was because of that black citizen who helped to stop the carnage. See, that's the answer to all of these anti-black attacks. We have to be honest about the situation that we're in and take concrete steps to remedy it. Nobody's going to protect us except us. That's what Biden's DHS notice was meant to say. Tell everybody, well, black folks, they're on their own. Okay, that's fine. That's a good thing. 
The solution to these anti-black race ambushes, no matter who carries them out, is for us to be ready to protect ourselves. Nobody's going to give black people permission to protect themselves, and don't expect a pat on the back when you do. It doesn't matter if you're trying to protect yourself from the Louisville Thug Patrol, or if you're trying to protect yourself from the latest white supremacist irregular soldier who's decided that he's going to open fire on a black crowd. Nobody's going to pat you on the back and say, good job. So, stop asking. Biden's administration has sent a very clear message to us. So we're going to have to send an equally clear reply, far louder and far stronger than Biden and the Dems' not-so-benign neglect. They made it a point to let us know that they weren't going to lift a solitary finger to protect black people? Fine. Then you also don't get to complain about the clapback. Good evening, and be one.